Hello young chefs, welcome back to Coach's Kitchen. Today we're going to be making some baked chicken, some mac and cheese, and some green beans. So yesterday I had a really tough workout. I hiked about 10 miles. Um, and so today I've just been kind of resting, stretching, taking care of my body. So I definitely want to eat a meal that's high protein and high carbs uh, to get some nutrition back into my body and refuel and be ready to go tomorrow. So I'm going to show you how I do it. All right, so to begin, this is how my setup station is looking. I've got four chicken thighs. I've got my Vikings bag. And I've got my spices. We've got some Himalayan pink sea salt, some coarse black pepper, some thyme, some paprika, and some spicy garlic. So what I'm gonna do is put the chicken into this bag, mix all my seasonings in there, and then let it sit for about a half hour just so that all those seasonings are able to uh, get in there and really flavor my meat so I've got a good flavorful meal tonight. So before I actually put my chicken in the bag, I'm going to grab each piece of chicken and just trim off the excess fat. So I've got like what you call poultry shears, which are just big scissors basically. So all that extra fat, like I don't really want to be eating that. It's kind of nasty. So I'm just going to cut that off into the trash. I'm gonna do that for all four of my pieces and then I'll show you the seasoning process. All right, so I've got the majority of the fat off there. I'm gonna take my pieces of chicken, pop them right into the bag. Get this. And I'm gonna just wash my hands real quick before I start touching those seasonings. Which is a good reminder that during this coronavirus outbreak, you guys should all be washing your hands a lot. Definitely one little thing that you can do to stop the spread. All right, so I'm gonna open up my bag. Doesn't matter what order you do this. I'm gonna start with the salt. Remember that chicken, chicken is really lean, meaning it doesn't have a, a lot of fat. So it doesn't have uh, like a ton of natural flavor. So you're gonna want to season chicken a little more than you do with like beef or pork or uh, other meats. Uh, even a little bit more. Some black pepper. you can see in there. Oops. Some. All right, so after I've added my seasoning, this is what it should look like in the bag. You wanna kind of massage it around, uh, make sure that all parts of the chicken are covered there so they're all getting seasoned. But once again, that was just salt, pepper, paprika, spicy garlic, and thyme. So really nice and easy. And then <clears throat> just like the uh, shrimp that we did, the longer you let this sit, the more flavorful it's gonna be. Uh, for me, I'm only gonna let this sit for about 20 minutes because I'm getting pretty hungry. Um, but if you were preparing this ahead of time and you wanna leave it for a few hours, that'd be a really good idea to do. All right, so we've got our oven preheated to 425 degrees. I've got my cast iron skillet. I put a little bit of avocado oil in the bottom, spread out my pieces of chicken on there. Um, and if you don't have a cast iron skillet at home, that's fine. You can use any sort of like a baking sheet or a roasting pan or anything like that. Um, I like to use a cast iron skillet because it kind of fries them too and it's gonna make them nice and crispy in the oven. And then kind of the finishing touch here, we're gonna take a little piece of butter and pop one on top of each piece of chicken. It's gonna make it nice and juicy and it's gonna help it to get uh, really nice and brown and crispy in the oven as it's cooking. All right, so we've got about four minutes left. The chicken's been in for 11 minutes. 
Um, if you never have cooked mac and cheese before, so if you're just getting started cooking, um, this is a really good, easy place to start. All the directions are on there. They say to use six cups of water. It really doesn't matter how much water you use. Um, but basically, you're just going to boil some water, put the noodles in, um, stir those noodles while they're cooking for about nine minutes, drain it, and then you're going to add some milk and butter, and that's it. So I actually don't have any green beans, so we're going to call an audible and use peas instead. So if I'm reading how to make peas, place the frozen peas in one fourth cup of water uh, for oh for every cup of vegetables. Okay, so we've got ratios. Really good for you sixth graders um, and current fifth graders. This is good for you to get into as well. So if I'm going to cook, I'm actually only going to cook one cup. So I'm going to use one fourth cup of water. But let's say I was going to cook five cups of vegetables. Hmm, how many cups of water should I use? All right, so I've got my water starting to boil, just waiting here. My timer's going off on the chicken. Always use an oven mitt, safety first. And we're gonna see what this chicken is looking like here. Oh man, that smells good. All right, so it's about halfway done. I'm gonna go ahead and flip these over and put them back in. All right, so I flipped the chicken over. So this is actually the bottom side, so we're going to leave that on the top for a little bit. Um, and I did add a little bit more spices on there. My water is just starting to boil. So I'm going to open up my box of macaroni. Take out the little cheese packet. We're just going to dump it in nice and easy. Take a spoon and make sure you stir it. So you definitely do want to make sure that you're stirring mac and cheese while you're cooking, um, just because a lot of times it can stick to the pot if you don't. All right, so now my chicken's back in the oven. I've got both my pots on the stove here. My mac and cheese is boiling, so I'm just gonna keep stirring that. My water just started to boil for my peas. And I put a quarter cup of water in. I'm gonna add my one cup of peas. And then I'm going to get that water back to a boil. Um, and then as soon as that water for the peas starts to boil again, which won't be very long, then I'm going to put a lid on it, turn it down, and let it simmer for like five minutes. All right, so my mac and cheese has been on for about nine minutes. I'm going to go ahead and turn off that burner. I'm going to strain these noodles. Nice and hot. Make sure you're careful, you don't want to get burned by the steam. All right, and now I've got those noodles back in the pot. I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of butter. We're gonna open up the cheese packet. So definitely not the healthiest side, uh, but it's nice and quick and easy. Um, and it's a good thing that you should be able to make on your own uh, pretty easily. And then I'm gonna take my milk. I've just got a little container of milk um, because like I suspect a lot of my viewers do, I prefer chocolate milk. Um, so I really only use regular milk to like mix stuff and make stuff. And I don't really measure it out, I just kinda eyeball it. So we're gonna mix that up and see how it looks. Looks like we added about the perfect amount of milk. And you wanna make sure there's no clumps in there. So you just keep mixing, keep mixing. Eventually that butter is gonna melt with the residual heat. All right, that's starting to look pretty good. All right, and my peas are done. I just drained out the water. Just a little single serving of peas there. 
Um, and now the timer for the chicken went off. So it's been in there for a little bit less than 30 minutes, probably about 28 minutes. So it should be almost done cooking, but not quite. Oh man, that smells good. All right, so what we're gonna do here is carefully take the tongs, and flip it back over. So the top side or that smooth side will be showing usually like the presentation side uh, because it typically looks a little better um, and I can tell that my chicken has about uh, eight ten minutes left of cooking so I'm going to show you guys a little pro tip here so what I'm going to do is going to grab some pieces of garlic I'm going to throw those in and I'm actually going to take my peas and put them right in here with the chicken and let them cook for that last 10 minutes um, so they get a lot of that butter, garlic, and seasoning on them. And then it's going to really blend those flavors together. Alright, so here we have the finished product. Mac and cheese looking pretty good. Oh, and all the spices and garlic are really starting to smell good too. So overall, uh, with the prep time and everything, this probably took me about an hour and 15 minutes to make. Um, actual cook time is about 35 minutes. All right, and now the moment of truth for the taste, taste test. We've got a nice big piece of chicken, some peas, and some mac and cheese on there. Let's see how it is. Mmm. Oh, wow. That chicken is really juicy, really flavorful. Um, after I plated it up, I uh, took some of the butter from the pan and poured it over the chicken too. Man, that's got a good taste. Um, the peas are definitely way better if you put them in the cast iron skillet instead of just putting them in there plain. Gives them a little more, um, a little more spice and seasoning and just makes the whole meal flow together pretty well. And uh, that mac and cheese, it's a classic. Delicious every time. Uh, so until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, keep cooking. This is Coach's Kitchen.